Blinking an LED is widely considered the first step when approaching a new embedded platform. And today, we're gonna do that with a Raspberry Pi Pico W. So for what we're doing today, you will need a Raspberry Pi debug probe, as well as a Pico W. Mine has pre-soldered headers. Yours doesn't need to if you're comfortable with soldering or more comfortable than I am with breadboards. That said, you'll also need some header pins to go through the debug port on the Raspberry Pi Pico W, or being comfortable with being a little bit hacky. And you'll also need a breadboard to put all this together with, or a soldering iron if you're just more experimental than I am. You'll need Probe Run to be installed, so cargo install Probe Run. And we'll be using the Embassy crates as well as the CYW43 crate to power the Wi-Fi chip on the Pico W. All right, so we're back from New Orleans and async front times are great, but on microcontrollers, we're gonna go no standard and we're not gonna use the standard library. So that means that we don't get to use things like Tokyo, but we can replace Tokyo with a specialized async runtime. That is what Embassy is. Embassy allows us to program microcontrollers with familiar async await syntax and futures. Async tasks get transformed at compile time into state machines that can run cooperatively. Embassy requires no dynamic memory allocation and runs on a single stack as well. This means that it obsolates the need for a real-time operating system with kernel context switching. But that's not all. Embassy is also batteries included. But what does that mean? When we build for microcontrollers, we need to build on top of hardware, which typically means building a hardware abstraction layer because you don't wanna be managing registers manually yourself. These abstraction layers are called HALs or hardware abstraction layers. And Embassy includes quite a few of them, including Raspberry Pi and ESP32. Embassy also includes support for usable time types like duration, as well as networking, USB, and Bluetooth. And the async executor means Embassy is real time ready with higher priority tasks being able to preempt lower priority tasks. The executor also puts cores to sleep when they're not in use, which means reduced power usage, meaning your devices and your projects can run for years. And finally, you're probably familiar with upgrading the firmware in say a camera. This camera, for example, just got a firmware update 3.0. Embassy Boot provides this use case to your projects. That leaves us with the other major crate we'll be covering, CYW43. The CYW4343-9 is the Wi-Fi chip used in the Pico W. The repo for this Wi-Fi chip includes a blob of firmware that we'll use to drive the chip. So with the crates out of the way and it comes to building the program, there are basically two approaches we can take. We can build up our own program from scratch, which we'll leave to another day, or we can build one of the example programs from the embassy repos. I think that for embedded projects and hardware in general, I've found less example-based documentation and less documentation in general. That doesn't mean things are undocumented, but it does mean that finding a program that works and making sure that can compile gives you a little bit of a reassurance that you're not using something wrong. And I think this lack of documentation makes building a program from scratch a little bit harder. So for me, getting a program running with Embassy and the Pico W was easiest by using the example program in the CYW43 crate repo. This is because I was guaranteed to have an application that can run on the Pico W and I could deal with any of the issues that rose up because they were definitely my issues. This is also the approach my friend Derek takes in their blog post on blinking an LED on the Pico W. Now this program in the CYW W43 repo is about 300 lines of code that implements a TCP echo server. We'll mostly be removing some code for this and inserting our blinking code. So I'm not gonna cover all of what the code does, but I will cover the important parts for compiling and updating your program to run on the Beco W. Okay, so to get our program running, we're gonna use the CYW43 repo. This is again, the crate that contains the firmware to run the Wi-Fi chip on the Beco W. And inside of the examples folder, there's an RPI Beco W example. This comes with a dot cargo with a file in it, source with a main.rs in it, cargo toml, build rs, and a memory.x blob. Now in my example, I have a pio.rs, which includes a piospi, which is a bunch of code that I didn't write. I copied and pasted this in. That code, I believe, is this CYW43PIO crate. So presumably, if you're looking at this now, you can just use this instead. But at one point, I had to copy that code in here. The other thing that I have copied in here is the firmware. So if you go to the root of the repo again, you get firmware right here. These files are the exact same files I have. Copy the binary blobs as well as the license and the readme if you want it right into the root of your project. This is the firmware that we're gonna to use to drive the chip. Memory.x we don't need to touch. 
Cargo Tommel has quite a few different dependencies and such. I'm pinned to a specific commit for the CYW43 chip, as well as patching over the embassy crates. So the embassy crates are not released on crates.io right now. You do have to pin to an actual git commit. So in this case, this is my git commit and patch.crates.io means that wherever else we use them, they will get overridden with these versions. Now this kind of setup is very common when using embassy because embassy is not on crates.io yet. So we end up with a lot of the embassy crates with a lot of features enabled for various things pinned to specific commits with a couple of different things and options set in our profiles. Build.rs is only slightly interesting. It's basically just copying memory.x into the out directory and then setting a couple of different things that are basically going to trigger rebuilds. So in this case, this is the way that you set up a rebuild if memory.x has changed. Config.toml is how we configure our program to run. You will need the thumb v6m none eabi target installed. So if you don't have that, you'll have to install that via rust up. And then as I said earlier in this video, you do need the probe run CLI. So cargo install probe dash run. And we're going to run that on the RP2040, which is the uh, chip that is on the POW. All that to say, the code that you really care about is in main.rs. There is quite a bit of code here. It is only about 300 lines, so it is readable, but you will probably have to look some stuff up. If we start in at main here, you get a spawner. And this is basically like the Tokyo main. If you've worked with Tokyo before, we initialize the embassy RP runtime and we pull in the bytes for the firmware for the Wi-Fi chip, as well as the country locale matrix, which I'm going to be honest, I don't fully understand the country locale matrix. A lot of the rest of this is just boilerplate. It is quite important to comment out some specific code though. So right at the bottom, there's going to be a loop in the example project from CYW43. Comment out the Wi-Fi joining and then comment out everything inside of this loop or delete it, whatever you want to do. I've left mine in. And then the way that we turn the LED on and off is related to a set of GPIO pins. So GPIO, general purpose IO, is just a set of pins on the Pico W that can be set to either 3.3 volts or zero volts. That is either high or low. In this case, we're using pin zero. Control is something we set up earlier. Now the GPIO pins are just general pins. They can be set to whatever. They aren't given a particular purpose by the board. So we can use them basically for whatever we want. And in this case, we're using the timer capabilities that we talked about earlier in the video. So we're getting a duration of one second. We're setting the timer. And then after that, we set the GPIO zero pin to true or high. And we await that because we're communicating with an output pin here. We set the duration again to one second and we hit the timer and then we set the GPIO to false. And this is what turns the LED on and off. So this will loop over and over and over. Then we'll turn it on or set it to high and then turn it off or set it to low. And that's basically it. If we go back and we check the uh, cargo config.toml, then we'll see that the runner is the probe run chip RP2040, like we said before. And in that case, we can just use cargo run. It will use the runner here. It will use the target we want to use because that will default to uh, some v6m non eabi. If we check the rust toolchain.toml, that is also what I have here. So that's why we are defaulting to that. I am using a specific version of nightly, but you'll probably be able to update that. So if we run cargo run, we'll see a bunch of things run. Again, I have the three debug pins from the RPI debug pro plugged into the debug ports on the Pico W. And I also have both the debug probe connected to my computer, as well as the Pico W itself connected to a power source. And that's it. The light is blinking for me right now. You can see the GPIO out being set. And if we scroll back up, we can see a little bit of DHCP happening here as well, because that code is also in the main.rs, even though we're not using it. But we can see the number right here where I'm waving the mouse one, zero, one, zero. And that's it. And that's a blinking of LED on the Pico W. There's quite a bit to go over here. It probably makes more sense to do a more in-depth from scratch video, but I'm having fun with this and I wanted to share it with you. If you wanted to see how Rust runs on an actual microcontroller, this is how it happens. So I hope that you're gonna go out and get a Pico W and try it yourself. Make sure to get the Raspberry Pi debug probe because it does make it easier. Otherwise you will need two Pico Ws. That's just not the configuration I'm working in. And that's it for today. If you want to see more embedded videos and you watch to the end, let me know in the comments, um, especially let me know what platforms you're working with, what you want to see, and I will catch you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.